What's going on, Wolfpack Nation? Thank you all so much again for tuning in. We've got another exciting episode here of uh, Tuffy Talk, and thank you all so much again. Uh, before we get going here, I want to make sure, please make sure to hit that subscribe button. It really helps support us and the channel. Uh, please give this video a like, and also go check out all of our great NC State content. Give us a follow at Tuffy Talk now on Twitter and Instagram. But with that being said, though, we've got an exciting episode today. Is we got uh, Kenton Gibbs. Uh, for those who don't know, uh, uh, Locked On Wolfpack is a, a great podcast uh, daily, if I'm not mistaken, but we'll get a little bit more information about it. But also, too, with, again, having his aspect of being a former NC State player as well, uh, you know, under Doran, I think, you know, obviously always shed some great light, you know, on, on the aspect of a fan, but also too on the, on the fact of a, of a former player as well. So Ken, really appreciate you joining us here today, my man. Oh, I'm glad to be here, man. I'm glad to be here. I'm, I appreciate uh, the, the invite and, you know, we, Hey, like you said, like subscribe, follow, I'm gonna pull up to your house. Okay. Now you don't <laughs> want six to 300 pounds plus a man at your front door. Say, Hey, why you ain't following Tuffy talks yet? Check out locked on Wolfpack as well. But yeah, Absolutely. it's always great to be here. Absolutely, man. Absolutely. So with that being said, though, Ken, I wanted to kind of, uh, you know, for those, you know, who maybe don't know necessarily who you are, but I mean, it's been a little bit, obviously, since you, since you wore the red and white for sure. But I know that uh, you were actually there um, and you were actually part of the the world famous Pac-13 recruiting class. I mean, obviously one of the greatest recruiting classes in, in NC State football history. I mean, just not to say, you know, maybe from the glaring of like, you know, being a top five recruiting class, whatever it is, but the names that came out of it, um, you know, as well. Mm-hmm. And so I know that, that, you know, so one thing I do want to kind of give, so if, who am I kind of getting a little bit of background in terms of, you know, where are you from, Ken, you know, uh, you know, kind of talking a little bit about, you know, I guess, you know, what kind of brought you to NC state and then you'll know, we'll kind of go from there if you don't mind. Oh, absolutely. Uh, I'm from Detroit, Michigan, mm-hmm. uh, played at a football powerhouse in the Midwest at Cass tech. And, um, we're, w- the the thing that happened was um, I was looking to choose between uh, Wisconsin, Illinois, and um, it was Wisconsin, Illinois, and and I can't remember who the third school was at the time, but it was it was basically those two schools were neck and neck. And Coach Doran came to me from Northern Illinois and said, "Hey, would you you know be interested in our program and all that good stuff?" And I said, "Hey, respectfully, man, I don't see myself leaving the state." Uh, to play at Northern Illinois. And so um, it was very fortuitous turn of events because Brett Bielema took off and went to Arkansas literally the week that I was like, all right, I'm going to, I'm going to commit to Arkansas because I I committed to Illinois, but I played with the defensive line coach at Illinois grandkids. I played with both of his grandkids and his grandkids were like, yeah, no, he's not going to be there. I said, what? (laughs) <laughs> they said, yeah, he's leaving. I said, oh, good to oh, know. Okay. And 18 year old me had never been through the recruiting process. Nobody in my family uh, knew anything about what it was like to go to college and all that. And and if I go back in time, I tell my 18 year old self, pick the college that you love, not the coach. Cause you're, right. you're going to, you're the, the coaches switch up. The coaches yep. change like radio stations. The college is what it is, what it is. Mm-hmm. And so, um, when Brett Bielema left, I'm like, yeah, hey, I'm not sure about Wisconsin. And, and there's a, there's a really funny story about that. I'll tell y'all off air. I can't, I, I'm sure y'all got a clean rating on YouTube and Apple podcasts and Spotify. We don't want to ruin that right now, but I'll tell you yeah. a little, little bit more about that off air. Fair um, enough. but yeah, some things with, some things went down to Wisconsin where I was like, mm, I don't know about that. And then, um, Illinois, the coach said that he was leaving. And then Doran said, he called me back and he said, uh, he, he called me from a nine one nine number and said, "Hey, I know you wouldn't leave the state to play mm-hmm. in uh, at at Northern Illinois, but what do you think about NC State?" I said, "All right, that sounds like my type, my type of speed right there. We can yeah. make something happen." And NC State had a lot of similarities uh, to my high school. Like it was so. For example, when I say football powerhouse, we've always put out players. Always, always, always put out players. Mm-hmm. We never won at a high level. Like yeah. we we never achieved the state championship before my class got there. Uh, we had like three city championships in school history and my class left with three city championships and two state championships. The first mm-hmm. two division one state championships in the history of the city of Detroit. So mm-hmm. um, I thought to myself, if I come down here and we win ACC championships, we mm-hmm. win national championships, it'll be mm-hmm. the exact same thing. Like it, it, And the, the fanfare and the love that I got in high school for winning state championships, it was like my me and my teammates literally didn't go to class for like a month straight because it was like every day 
we were, and this is not a, a knock on our educational system because DPS is, is doing the best they can with what they got. But we were every day, it was like a new signing of some declaration or somebody was celebrating us. And so um, just time and time again, it was a situation of like, we're being showered with love and being treated like the greatest things in the city just for playing ball. And I thought to myself, if we do that in Raleigh, I mean, the entire state's going to love us. The entire, yeah. you know what I mean? Like, and so that was, that was, uh, that was what brought me here. Mm-hmm. And all in all, you know, everything that happened, my, my body petered out on me due to injuries, but all in all, I'm happy with my choice. I'm happy with how everything turned out simply because I always said, I never want to be a guy that I look back at my career and I say, if some, when people talk about me, they say, oh yeah, the drugs got him or he couldn't go to class or he couldn't stay out of uh, young women's spaces and he just didn't know, he couldn't figure it out. Right. Uh, he didn't want to learn the playbook. He was lazy. I said, I'll give it everything I got. And if it doesn't work out, it's because it wasn't meant to be. And, and something went wrong that I couldn't control. You know right. what I mean? And, and Layton, Amen. you were there. You were you were uh, an assistant for the team. You saw day in, day out. I was one of the first guys in, last out every day. But mm-hmm. my body didn't – I, I can't control how strong my tendons are or not. So right. I, yeah. I live with that. And I a, a lot of people say they have no regrets in life. They'll, those people must live exceptional lives because I'm 26 and have a ton of regrets. Mm-hmm. Sure. But um, none of them have anything to do with my time playing football for NC State. Yeah. Now, awesome. one thing which I want to clarify, so so you had offers from Illinois State, Cincinnati, Indiana, Pitt, and Wisconsin. So those are your main offers. You had some other ones as well, but those were the main ones. So I don't know if there was if one of those were the other ones that you were considering with Illinois or Wisconsin. But um, anyway, so oh, the, the the list goes on for a little longer than that. But yeah, it, it does. Well, no, I, I said, I said, I said. So you, well, you got like Eastern Michigan, Northern Illinois, Toledo. Oh no, but, no, I'm 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 trying to tell you that ESPN at that time. That's when they were like they were getting into getting all the the fully tracking and all that. But at that time I had an offer from every school in the big 10, except Michigan, Michigan state and Ohio state. Um, there so you go. Those were the only three that, that didn't offer me. And that's where all my teammates went. And 18 year old me was like, yo, I don't want to play against my teammates. If I don't have to, like, if I can't play yeah. with my guys, I don't mm-hmm. want to play against my guys. So, yeah. you know, that's, that's what happened there. So kind of getting into a little bit now, you know, I, I completely understand. First of all, I love, you know, everything you just said about, you know, falling in love with the school with, you know, doing the best you can, with what you got, um, you know, but I, I feel like, you know, first of all, I want to kind of say, so what was your initial thought on, on Doran when, 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 you know, you know, what, what was your initial thoughts on him as a coach and as a person, you know, when you first met him? Um, I, I thought like, Oh, this is like a, a real cool, like he's, he's just a real, I mean, I, I don't want to use the word bland, but he was like honest and it was just like straight to the point type mm-hmm. of deal. You know what I mean? Cause I, yeah. I, I know I'm, I'm from the West side of Detroit. I know a scam when I see one and something, <laughs> there were, there was something that happened with another school where, um, a coach basically was like, Hey, promise me you won't commit anywhere. We promise we won't take another D tackle. And, um, you know, it, it just promise me you won't commit until right. you take your official visit here. I said, Oh, you got it, bro. Like, you know what I mean? We're, we're good. We're going to rock out with that. And then he like hit me. It was like, Hey, we took another defensive tackle. And I was like, all right, cool. Like what that got to do with me? And he was like, Oh, we no longer have a scholarship for you. And I'm like, right. but you, but you probably, and you know, so that, that type of yeah. deal really like had me like, I don't, I don't want the salesman. I don't want the, the flash and dash. Um, I just want the, the, you know, straightforward and all that. And honestly, the main person who recruited me to come to NC state was coach Falk. So, you know, that's, that's why when you said you work with coach Falk, I know me and me and coach Falk are frat brothers. We both members of Kappa Alpha Psi. He's Ooh. a great dude. I, I love him to death and I'm, I'm grateful for him bringing me to Raleigh still mm-hmm. to this day. Yeah. Now, the one thing though, I do got to kind of talk a little bit about coach Falk because, you know, we had him on a previous episode with, which for those state fans who haven't seen that episode, make sure to go check that out. It's obviously talked about Jay Sam and you name it, his time in state, but now being with the Pittsburgh Steelers, but you know, I think I think Faulkner. But I mean, you look at even like some of the other coaches that that Dorn had, even. And I, I'm talking primarily from the coaches that that we know, Ken, you and I, you know, because we we can't really talk much about Beck and and you know some of the other assistants that are there now because we weren't there with them. But I mean, you look at like Nielsen, you look at uh, Ryan Nielsen, you look yeah. at 
Uh, you look at Des Kitchings. You, I mean, you look at all these guys. And I mean, I feel like that all of those guys did a great job of not only connecting, you know, with you on a personal basis. Because I still say to this day that that if you ask me for any defensive line coach, of who would I want to have as my defensive line coach in my school? I would say Ryan Nielsen, <laughs> primarily because I mean that guy connected. I mean he was he was probably. I mean, I mean, he was a fit dude. So, I mean, I'm not necessarily going to guess on his weight, but I mean, you look at him, and you don't think he's a defensive line coach, but I mean, that guy is a like he is just like every single practice was just like intense and just was was hardcore and just was. I mean, he was awesome. Like I loved. I wasn't a defensive line manager, but I loved watching him. Like I was on the offense side, and I was like looking over at Nielsen, like just try, just to watch him because I mean, he was so intense. I loved watching game. I think that it was a perfect perception of what you wanted in the defensive lineman, somebody who was always intense. And I know from you being a defensive lineman, you know, Ken, I'm sure you could probably talk a little bit more about that, but I mean, you know, I know this kind of transition from kind of talking about fog to kind of talk about Nielsen, but I feel like from you being a defensive lineman, I got to bring that up. Cause I mean, I mean for him to be with the saints ever since he left and still be there. Yeah. I think that says a lot about him as a coach, as a defensive line coach. Oh, absolutely. And by the way, if you look up pictures of him at USC, You'll see, he was a nose guard through and through. That that was a, a he was a unit back in the day, all right? <laughs> An absolute unit. But with yeah. that being said, yeah, Coach Coach Nelson and Coach Falk are like two very opposite ends of the spectrum, right? Like Coach yeah. Falk, too cool for school. You rarely ever hear him yell. Like he's like, hey, man, you keep doing that, I can't play. Yeah. Coach Nelson, you mother. <laughs> yeah. It's always, yeah. he's, yeah. he's always on the thousand, always go, go, go. Right. He's yeah. from the uh, Ed Orgeron coaching tree. So, you know, he, he's oh, yeah. one of those guys that you would imagine that he like, uh, he, he dips, he chews coffee grinds like they're dip or something. Cause he just is always, always up. But I mean, the biggest thing that I think many people, uh, don't really give Nelson credit for, because you're right. He did connect with it. He was a fundamental tactician. Like at the end of the day, he coached fundamentals so hard. He coached fundamentals like I have never had a, of a coach. And, and every coach, just like every person, no person is perfect, right? Every person, if so, if we ask anybody to describe him, people are going to say good things about him. People are going to say bad things about him. Same thing with Coach Nelson. But one thing that you cannot say about Nelson is that he was relaxed on the, the fundamentals. He was a guy who did not care about success. He was just like, hey, I'm here to get my check and move on to the next spot. He cared about the success of us as a team. He cared about the success of us as individuals. And he cared about us beyond just like, oh, if y'all do good, I'm out of here. And that's it. Like, you know, he, right. he genuinely was like, hey, I want y'all to go to the league. I want y'all to make money. I want y'all to. And, and when I started getting injuries and all that, and as I saw with other walk-ons who like, we knew, like, all right, you're not going to be playing on Sundays. He made it very clear. Get your degree. Get your education. Right. Get your master's for some people. It was just a situation where he wanted you to put yourself in the best situation out of success and whatever he believed that was for you. Mm -hmm. Amen. Before we continue, I want to take a quick second to tell you about our sponsor, Flatlands Dress Up Insurance Group, that has your whole world covered with agents in five offices throughout eastern North Carolina to help you decide how much coverage you need, offering policies for home and auto, recreational vehicles, commercial, crop, health, life, and employee benefits. They are able to combine options to find a comprehensive solution that works for you. Flatlands Jessup protects the things you love so you can spend less time worrying and more time enjoying them. Find them on Facebook and Instagram at Flatlands Jessup. You can also visit their webpage at www.flatlandsjessup.com. So please make sure to go and check them out. Well, and because like one, like, you know, one, one uh, uh, story I want to bring in as well is, you know, for those who haven't seen, you know, back, you know, when, when those guys were there, they did uh, like a mic'd up session. And uh, so I definitely recommend those who haven't seen the mic'd up with Ryan Nielsen to go check him out. But the one which I loved is when they were in the, uh, when you guys were in the, uh, uh, in the film room and he gave like an example of like, he got, he got the players to put their arms out and he said, all right, now rotate. And he said, where do you feel it? And to, to me as like, you know, as a defense, defensive line guy, I'm like, what does that have to do with anything? You know, putting your arms down, rotating, but it's like, I mean, he was, he knew the fundamentals inside now. And so I'm sure from a defensive line guy that you probably could tell me, you know, exactly why that matters. But that just like was, was crazy to me. And then, and one story I love as well is like when Darian Roseborough, I remember the moment that he committed to NC state, uh, cause it was on the sidelines and, and Nielsen walked up to him and Darian Roseborough shook his hand and, I, I didn't hear it, but I basically 
knew that going into that game that he it sounded like he was going to commit and with the and obviously he committed and and nielsen jumped and and wrapped his arm around darian's head and brought him in it was like yeah man yeah like you know like that's what i'm talking about and was so hype and i'm like oh i love that like i love that energy so again i mean it, i now i mean it's hard to you know kind of talk because obviously right now we got one of the all-time best and charlie wiles you know who i mean has oh, yeah. routinely you know pushed out you know, talented defensive lineman at Everging Tech. So, and I think he's done oh, a great job with these guys. Even, even in in the one year that he's been here, he's he's done an amazing yeah. job with these guys. So, yeah. Um, I mean, that, oh, go ahead, Mark. No, no. I was going to say, and that's that's one thing that we've talked about before that Doran has been great at it, getting great assistant coaches. Um, mm-hmm. And un- unfortunate for us, but fortunate for them, a lot of them go on and do bigger and better things. And, and, Mm -hmm. and I think that's one thing that makes Dorn a great coach is that he knows that you have to have the staff to, to support you. Yeah. I mean, as the Beatles said, I get by with a little help from my friends like that. Dorn knows that more than most coaches. And at the end of the day, if you look at all the best coaches in the nation, Mm -hmm. right, all of the best with the exception of Nick Saban, because Nick Saban, he's a different breed. He, regardless of who his (laughs) assistants are, where he goes, be it Michigan State, LSU, Alabama, you name it. Anywhere but the NFL, Saban's going to have success. But every other college coach, every other successful college coach does two things at an exceptional level. They recruit and they hire the best assistants and retain the best assistants. Yep. Now, Doran has a problem with retaining the best assistants because NC State at the moment is not – a final destination spot for most guys, right. right? Like that's that's understandable when you're looking at a program that hasn't won a a uh, pro, a ACC title or an Atlantic title since before any of us were born. Like, yeah. all right, you get it. But I mean, he does such an amazing job of hiring assistants. You look at Coach Drinkwitz and what he's going on to do. I mean, you you look at Tim Beck. To me, was a guy that I when I tell people I was geeked up. I was like a, a kid on Christmas when I found out we got Tim Beck because mm-hmm. I looked at Texas and I said, wait a minute. The offense ain't the problem. It is not Tim Beck. He is not the reason Texas is not having yeah. success. Mm-hmm. And when we got him, I said, oh, our offense is about to go to another level. Right. And at that, remember, when we first got him, that was before we knew what Devin Leary was. And then Devin Leary shows some, some signs <laughs> and then he gets hurt. And then he comes back and has a really good three games. Mm-hmm. After the COVID and all that, and then he gets, mm-hmm. and I, I told everybody, and anybody who, who thinks I'm lying, go back and pull up the tapes from Locked On Wolfpack. I said, Devin Leary this year is going to basically expand out what he did in those three games last year. And everybody was like, well, you know, they, they played uh, Duke and they played uh, Virginia Tech at the end of the game when they were relaxed and, and they played Pitt, who, who wasn't really good on defense. I said, okay, trust me. I am. Dollars to donuts. I will bet dollars to your donuts because I do love a good Krispy Kreme, especially when the red light is on and it just hits you. In the, it, you know what? We're not going to talk about that. Yes, sir. Bet, yes, sir. I love it. I told everybody, <laughs> I bet dollars to donuts. Mm-hmm. Devin Leary expands on those statistics. And actually, as far as touchdown to interception ratio, he has exceeded that. Yeah. As far as yards, he is on pace to get what he's supposed to get. As mm-hmm. far as completion percentage, I believe he's right there where he's supposed Better. to be. Yep. The, the proof is in the pudding. Doran does a great job. And Tony Gibson is another one. Uh, just mm-hmm. a great job of knowing, hey, I'm not the smartest guy in the room when it comes to everything. I need people smarter than me doing these things. I need people better than me doing these things. I'll do the head coaching thing. But y'all do the offense, you do the defense, and, and we'll get by like that. Yep. Yeah. Now, one thing, though, which I did want to ask is, especially since you were you know, under a defense held by Dave Huxtable, you know, what is the biggest difference that you see? Because I think, you know, definitely when when you saw the transition to Gibson, you obviously had a lot of nervousness just because he came from a West Virginia team that a, where a, that that the overall conference is absolutely not known for defense. They are known defense for basically. Yeah, have, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, exactly. Defense optional Big 12. So you go, huh, like I'm not really sure about that. But I mean, it's been clear. And, you know, one thing that we have said is that every single game, the defense has not been the problem. Now, I mean, like Wake Forest, they didn't necessarily have the best game. But they still weren't like, you know, like 
they didn't have a bad game. They just they had an off game, you know. But again, even yeah. still, it, it, it's it's a completely different defense. So what is what is the overall difference that you see moving on from the Huxtable defense to the Gibson defense? You know, I'm I'm going to be completely honest with you here. Go for Scheme it. Scheme wise, it three three five four two five whatever you want to do. I don't believe it's ever about your X's and your O's as far as scheme. I believe it's about your Larry's and your Joe's. And even being one of the Larry's and the Joe's that was under Huxtable, mm-hmm. I'm my my ego is not too big to admit they have better Larry's and Joe's now. Mm-hmm. I mean, listen, I love the guys that I play with. I, I'm still in touch with many of them. I'm still, me and Art Norman, me and Mike Rose, we still on the regular, hey, how you doing? Just just to chat. This This defense has talent like, we have not seen. That, tell me another time in NC State history, period, period, not just under under door. Another time in NC State history, period, where you can lose an All-American, you can lose an All-Conference guy, <laughs> and then the third guy is like, oh, he's a Defensive Player of the Year candidate. Yeah. Because our linebacker, that's what's happening. Peyton Wilson was supposed to be the all-world everything guy, a 1,000 miles an hour, long, athletic. I saw him play at Orange, and and – there, Sonny Vaccaro said that when he saw LeBron James play basketball, he only needed five minutes, and he knew, oh, he said, that's it. Stop the tryout. This guy is it. Mm-hmm. When I went to Orange to watch Peyton Wilson play, um, oddly enough, it was the helicopter game with, uh, yes, with Fedora. Fedora. <laughs> I, was, I was at the game where Fedora comes in on the helicopter. And so normally I, I always ask, because I was working for WRL at the time covering high school football, and so normally I, I ask, who are the guys to watch out for? I ask people, who are the guys, right? Mm-hmm. And so um, the, the folks from Orange, who because that's whose press box we were in, were telling me, oh, yeah, this guy, this guy, this guy, um, they're all to watch. And there's one more that he's going to jump out. And I said, what you, just tell me who he is. Who's the guy that's going to jump out? And they said, just watch. <laughs> You'll see him. I literally – after a quarter and a half, it. I said, wait a minute. Hold on. That that's that the All American. <laughs> that that's it's him. He played in that game, he played quarterback, running back. No, no, he played quarterback, tight end, linebacker, defensive end, defensive tackle. And I was just like That's crazy. And he he did all of them. What he made plays from every position I just named. Mm-hmm. I believe he played more positions than those, but those are just the ones <laughs> I remember him making plays from. He threw a touchdown. He caught a touchdown. He had a pick six. He had a sack. And I was just like, oh, okay, he's him. So that's a, a funny story there. But anyway, Isaiah Moore, another guy, balling, balling. Everybody talks about how cerebral he is. He's a freak athlete too. He is not only just in the right position, he comes there with bad intentions. Yep. And so you lose two guys like that. If back when I played, we had good linebackers. We had a good defensive line. We had a good secondary. We did not have any position group where we could have lost two players of that magnitude and the third man up was going to be as impactful as Drake Thomas. We just did. So no. No. Right. absolutely not. So with that being said, though, so so I guess we'll kind of wrap it up right here for the time being. But make sure to check out part two, y'all. And uh, make sure, again, to hit that subscribe button. Give us a follow Tuffy Talk now. And also, too, go check out Locked On Wolfpack. Ken, do you want to kind of uh, give the fans here, give the followers uh, a little bit of a, a plug on where to find you? Oh, absolutely. You can find me on Apple Podcasts. You can find me on Spotify. You can find me uh, pretty much anywhere you get your your regular daily podcast. Uh, Mm -hmm. I'm not streaming on video yet, but anywhere that you want to hear the audio, it is probably out there and available to you. And if it's not, follow me on Twitter at LO underscore Wolfpack. That is uh, the handle for the the, uh, show. You can follow me at TGIF underscore Kenton, but that is me as a man. That is not me, the sports journalist. So you'll hear a lot more than just sports things there. Uh, but if you have any confusion about where to find it, hit me up at either one of those places and we'll get you right. I love it. I love it. All right, guys. Well, thank you all so much again for tuning in, and we'll see you for part two, y'all. As always, go Pack. Go Pack.